Hi, I'm Neil Morrison of the Data Standards Body, the DSB. I'm here with Jared Judd, Head of Engagement at the DSB. Jared is going to talk to us about the CDR implementation call. How are you, Jared? I'm good, thanks, Neil. All right, here's your first question. What is the CDR implementation call for? Great question to start with, Neil. So, up first, the Consumer Data Right Implementation Call, or as what we like to call it, the CDR Implementation Call, focuses on allowing participants to work alongside subject matter experts from both the ACCC and the Data Stance body. This call is co-facilitated by those two agencies, as well as having observers from a number of other different agencies. The participants on the call can also ask questions, raise issues, or even have just general backwards and forwards questions and answers with members on the call. It's a great way to engage both with official agencies as well as with the broader audience of the consumer data right. When does it happen? Cool. The CDI implementation call occurs weekly on a Thursday afternoon at approximately 3 p.m. based on Melbourne or Sydney time. It's a virtual event of which you can dial in from any location across Australia, even internationally, if you can meet the time zone, versus having a physical physical location where you might need to walk into a different room or find a seat in a particular large auditorium. How long does it take? The call can take up to 90 minutes at a time. We commence at around 3 p.m. in that afternoon, based on Melbourne or Sydney time, with about five minutes joining, and then it's basically up to the agenda and how it plays out. We have a number of standard sections which we work through, and then it's an open uh, open call to around question and answer, allowing people to raise questions and communicate, and it can be as short as 30 minutes, or you can use up the full 90 minutes to explore complex or particularly contentious items. How many people participate? The call can have a number of people ranging from 80 to up to nearly 200 when we've had some of our peak presentations and particularly when it gets to that hairy last few weeks before a obligation date is required. Can anyone join? The call is available to all participants of the consumer data right. This can range from being a data holder, an accredited data recipient, a service provider or one of the implementers. You're welcome to join if you're an engineer, if you're a business analyst, if you're a program manager, you can jump on the call and be part of it. It's free to enter. We just ask that you be polite when you join the call and that you work with everyone on the call to come to the best outcome. Why should I join? The Consumer Data Right Implementation Call is not mandatory. It is a completely optional and it's effectively a support mechanism supported by the ACCC and Data Stands body. If you want to work through particular issues, raise questions, or flag particular errors that you might have come across, the call is a great way to get in contact. Other methods of communication, such as email, or waiting for written communication to go through are slower and require a bit of to and fro. Here, you're live, you're able to talk with experts, and be able to follow up items, or even see what's happening in the broader ecosystem. You've sold me, Jared. How do I join? If you'd like to join, the easiest way to do is to reach out to the data stands body. We have the calendar invitation, it's driven via Outlook, so it drops into your calendar, you get a reminder, as well as it got the dial-in details included in the invitation. So to do that, reach out to contact at consumerdatastands.gov.au and we'll get right on to adding you to that invitation. What technology is used for the call? So over the years, since we started this in February 2020, there have been a number of platforms that we've used to host this virtual event. At the moment, we are using Microsoft Teams as the chosen platform. You can join via the application on your computer or via a web browser. It is recommended to have an up-to-date web browser to engage in this particular virtual platform though. What happens in the CDR implementation call? The agenda for the call is fairly standard. We follow and adopt a particular set of sections that we work our way through, and then we open to general question and answer at the end. The sections at the start is introduction, welcome, do a little bit of admin and level setting, and then we jump into the updates for that week. So these updates range from all the different agencies. They often send through items to raise or notify. So this is a great way to absorb new information or updates to the consumer data right. After this, we then have a number of streams come through, both from the ACCC and the data stands body, 
and they update on latest releases, updates, maybe new consultations are coming through. And then once those streams are update, on occasion, and probably less frequent than we like, we have a presentation. This presentation can range from a noting paper or decision proposal through to new technologies, platforms or sandboxes that are available in the consumer data right. These presentations are often run by the subject matter experts and are great opportunities for you as a participant to jump in, ask questions and give feedback. After that presentation, we then move to the question and answer section. This section includes covering a number of answered tickets or questions that have come through over the last week. We find this is a great way to help cover off those common questions or where people go, I don't want to ask that, it's too basic. Guess what? Someone might have already asked that and we raise it and walk it through the call, which is you know, a great way to expand that education. Afterwards, we then open the floor to broader question and answer. This can range from anything from historical based issues or questions or particular topics, as well as to minutia or particular detail around an error code. The subject matter experts then work through your particular questions, provide answers or take things on notice if it's just a little bit complex or as the most common case is, requires multiple agencies to come together to provide that answer. Can I ask questions? One, there are two great avenues to ask questions on the call. One is to ask the question on the call in the chat. You can type it in, copy and paste it from a prior document, or just raise an existing question that you've asked before and would like to follow up an, uh, a question or answer for. The second is to come off mute and ask it directly. This is a great way to interact face-to-face, -face, give that extra bit of explanation, color or particular scenario to your question. It's often easier to articulate it directly to the subject matter expert versus dropping in the chat, which can be a wall of text. We do ask, however, with your questions when you ask them to the call, is if they are complex, if they have a number of scenarios, if they have a lot of conditions attached to them, that you raise these via written methods. Now, you may ask why, because of what I've covered before. It's challenging sometimes on the call, on the cuff, to answer some of these really complex, nuanced questions, particularly around policy, rules, or nuances in the standards, as well as standards that, that may be incorporated from external parties. The team will need to go away and work on these. We want to give the best outcome as quickly as possible. It's never the intent to hide. This is done in a transparent fashion. The intent here is to give you the best answer and experience possible. So for really complex questions, weigh it up. If you're already on your second paragraph for a question, it's probably a little bit complex and it's best to shoot it through to the CDR support portal so the team can work through it and give you a constructive and cohesive response right there in writing as well. You're always welcome to submit questions in advance. The best way to do that is to shoot it through to the CDR support portal. We can drop it in there. You can raise, hey, can we have this question as part of the call coming up? Please give us a few days notice though, because shooting it just before the call means that I might just get to it and I might not even get time to put it in front of the right people to have a look at on that particular call. Or you can shoot it through and just raise, hey, I've got ticket number XYZ that I need you to have a look at as a priority and we can check that one out for you. How do I prepare for the call? Now, preparing for the call is important. What we've observed over a number of years now running this call is there are sort of two camps or two trains of thought as people approach these calls. Some often come to just absorb updates, see what's the current trend in the ecosystem and see what's changing. Others come with a list of prepared questions and that is really, really great. We love that level of engagement. So one thing you can definitely do is have a look at the agenda or agendas in, in the past to get a feel of what's gonna come up Second is to make sure that you're sort of connected with our newsletters, different platforms, etc. And third, have a number of questions prepared in writing. Let's say in a notepad. The reason I say notepad, it's got no formatting with it. So when you copy it across, you never get none of that nasty HTML markup or whatever stuck in it. Uh, and then from there, you can then sort of triage your questions to say, hey, here are ones I want to ask on the call and here are ones that I should probably submit in writing because they're a little bit more complex and I expect the answer to not just be a yes or no, it's a, it depends. On top of that, it's also worthwhile coming into the call to make sure that you understand our community guidelines. This is an important topic around behavior and working with everyone. All right, let's do some simple maths around assessing the impact of your question on the call. 
The call runs for 90 minutes, and if we have 100 members on that call, that's 9,000 minutes that we've just absorbed in one week. That's a large amount of time when you look at it. And that's only if the call runs for the full time. But when we're exploring and working through, it's worthwhile weighing up which, which questions do you have to ask, which feedback do you have to provide on that call at that point in time, versus submitting it through writing in one of our many other channels, including GitHub, including the CDR support portal. Is the call recorded and published? Cool, that's a great question and quite a common one that we get. The CDI implementation call, as part of our admin that we do at the first start, is actually recorded. However, we don't publish this to the public. We've been asked many times on whether to do this. However, what we found is if we are recording and capturing people's different questions, nuances, uh, different interactions, we find that if it's recorded and going to be published, A, there's a lot of admin overhead to get these published, but B, we also find it prohibits a lot of open communication. If you know that you're gonna be recorded and published asking that question, which you feel might be a little bit simple, basic, then you might not ask it. And that defeats the whole purpose of the CDI implementation call. It is there to facilitate an open, transparent platform for people to communicate and work together. So no, we won't be publishing it for now. We do sometimes publish the presentation components that's when it's edited out and can sort of compressed down to that particular topic because we want to replay that section as part of information dissemination to the broader ecosystem. But for the Q&A, for any of those sections, no, we don't record and we won't be recording for the foreseeable future. What is expected of me when I join the call? Cool. Uh, that is a great question because that focuses on how we work together as a community. We have members from various different organizations. We have different competitive guidelines that we have to adhere to. People need to be conscious of when they're interacting. As a former member of working for large organizations, I know the training and obligations that each member has when you're coming from and working with other organizations, particularly competitors. We have a set of community guidelines, which we set out and mention at the start of every single call. These are in place to make it a safe and open place to communicate and work together. The idea is we don't want to prohibit any conversations. We don't want to stop anyone having ideas. The idea is to have a safe and open working place. So if you want to understand what these are, please check these community guidelines out. They're at the, they're at the top of the agenda and you can read through them and understand them. If you've got questions, please raise them about the community guidelines. We want feedback, we want to include them. If we've missed something that you feel is important, please let us know. We want to inc uh, increase these, iterate on them, and expand them to make sure these, these are comprehensive. Thank you, Jared, for talking to us about the CDR implementation call. I hope all participants who watch this video will be encouraged to participate. And thank you for participating in the Consumer Data Standards.